Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today I have for you a review of the new Tier 6 premium French cruiser, the De Grasse. And the ship has been a lot of fun for me. I've really enjoyed the French cruisers, La Galissonnière, I really liked, so it doesn't surprise me that I've enjoyed De Grasse. And the reason is, it's, you know, theoretically an improved La Galissonnière class. Originally, three of these were scheduled, only her got built. She didn't get commissioned for quite some time after being launched, served her career, and then ended it getting modified for nuclear trials where they detonated a bunch of bombs near her to see what would happen, and then she was finally struck and decommissioned. One of the funny things I find interesting about her is, if you read about it, it's an anti-aircraft cruiser. A lot like some of the later... British cruisers and stuff, these were post-war. They were built to deal with the new aircraft threat that was emerging. And yet, it's got some pretty crappy AA defense. And that kind of makes me chuckle. And even in Wargaming's description, they say like it has a unique anti-aircraft armament. So it's, I think, them acknowledging that, yes, this thing was built with the, for anti-aircraft purposes, but in-game for balance and all that and just to have you know kind of differences of class and nation her AA is not so great but digging into it you know not a bad ship as far as her armor goes well there's not a lot to expect it is a french cruiser and well you can see not a ton of armor around that citadel but if you've sailed any of the french cruisers if you're buying this ship you know that already like that's not some revelation that a cruiser doesn't have a ton of armor that's not really what they're about her survivability 31,200 hit points is good enough torpedo protection 13 percent once again it's a cruiser where she becomes a little different than la galissonnière is her main battery they fire a little bit quicker turret traverse is the same i know it says 14.2 here but that comes down to the captain and uh, otherwise the performance is pretty much the same if I recall a little bit longer range perhaps just have to pull her up because I have actually sold like at least on air so yeah just a touch longer range out of the grass which is really nice because with these French cruisers you really do tend to kite and stay outside and do your damage from range and that's where I've had success and I've been enjoying doing it a couple times I've gotten close it's always been you know with a teammate or division mate nearby who can help me out of trouble and the AP is reliable downside well the rate of fire isn't quite as good you can see 8.1 second reload time on her say like the Duca has 7.5 now the Duca Dausta, it's only got eight barrels. The DeGrasse has nine. But you look at something like the Bijoni, pretty similar layout and pretty similar characteristics. And really, the ships play quite alike. The main difference is DeGrasse brings the additional consumable of engine speed boost, which I love having. One of the advantages as well, she gets two triple barreled torpedo launchers rather than the double barreled that La Galissonnière has, but they reload a little bit slower. Nine kilometer range, 60 knots. These things I've enjoyed. The, you know, it's like the Japanese cruisers, except you get a much better arc. So you kind of give up one kilometer range for being able to pretty much fire anywhere. AA. I'm not even really going to talk about it. Like, there's a bunch of guns listed, but the reality is they're just not great. What is interesting is these main guns, they're listed under the AA. And once again, this was built as an anti aircraft cruiser. Now, I would think in reality, the average damage of those things firing in an anti aircraft role, probably a little better than that. The only real other kind of bigger AA guns are these double-barreled turrets at the back. But, you know, 
you're probably not using this. It has the defensive aircraft anti-consumable or defensive AA fire, but to me, hydroacoustic is more valuable. Late game, it lets you charge those destroyer smokes. You can use it to help, you know, in situations where you think torpedoes are coming at you to just dodge them. When you don't have the AA, I don't find running defensive AA all that useful because you're not really improving all that much. Her maneuverability, definitely good. That's a French characteristic, 33.5 knots, 690 meter turning circle, seven second rudder shift with the way I've got her. Comparatively, and I'm comparing it to the Bajoni because they're similarly sized ships and similar gun layouts. You can see 35 knots, 710 meter turning circle, and 6.9 second rudder shift. Now, both these ships have captains and modules, but they're comparable. So if you've sailed the Bajoni, you probably know a bit of what the Degrasse feels like if you don't have the French cruisers yet, but are still considering this ship. And finally, concealment, eh, nothing going on here, 12.9K, pretty average for a cruiser, 7.7 .7 from the air. Now, in the consumables, as I've kind of discussed already, you have the advantage of having damage control, hydro or defensive AA, engine boost, and a catapult fighter. And that catapult fighter is nice to have because your AA is not very good. Being able to interrupt and force like a torpedo squadron or dive bomber squadron, force them to that bigger dispersion, very useful. Now, as far as the upgrades I've gone for, I've got Magazine Mod 1 simply because I don't have Juliet Charlie's left. So I'm going for this. I don't like detonating, not fun. Otherwise, I'd be running main battery one. Second slot, I've gone for Amy mod. And I've done this because it helps out in a lot of areas. A, better accuracy under your mains, and you are gonna be sitting at range, so that helps out. Quicker torpedo tubes. With the arcs you have on these tubes, being able to sweep through them faster, useful, and then some bonuses to the secondaries that, eh, secondaries don't really matter. I've got damage control one. Now, Wargaming recommends steering mod one. I've personally strayed away from it simply because of how I've got the captain built right now. And then steering it here, modification two. And the reason I've gone with this is W, A, S, and D have to be your friends. With the engine boost, you're able to adjust your speed really quickly. And then you combine in some maneuver. You can be very tricky to hit at those longer ranges to the point where Battleships are wasting most of their shots, washing your deck so your sailors don't have to. As far as my captain, no new surprises here. It's the captain in my other French ships. I didn't start a new one yet. Now, I some people think priority target. Personally, I like to think I'm pretty aware of how many ships are aiming at me. So I've gone with preventative maintenance simply because the rudder is pretty susceptible to damage. So reducing that risk helps out. Tier 2, it's got expert marksman. I wouldn't recommend this skill. I would go for last stand instead. This is simply because this is also my Dunkirk's captain, and on it, that's a skill that I needed. Now, eventually I'm going to have more captains, and this ship's going to get last stand. Once again, rudder a little susceptible. Being able to still maneuver when it gets hit, really useful. Slot three, I've got superintendent and demolition expert. And in slot four, just because it's the Dunkirk captain right now, it's fire prevention. Realistically, you probably want to go, I'd say concealment. And you can mix this up a bit. IFHE, probably pretty useful. I've gone the demolition route. I just, at the range, being able to light those fires and just increase that chance a little bit, I find quite useful. And for me, the AP is quite effective on this ship. I've had battleship side on and just swapped to AP. I'm, I'm not relying on IFHE to do that damage. As far as other points, I'm not sure where to spend them. Adrenaline rush could be useful once you get the skill points, but you know, everyone, how they build their captains up to them. So now let's jump into a battle and see how she performs. Full disclosure, as we get underway, this was actually my first game in Degrasse, and 
while not the highest damage game I've had, it was probably one of the most fun. And the second thing, I haven't played as many games of this ship as I normally would reviewing a premium vessel. And the reason's quite simple. It is so similar to La Galice on the air that I just didn't feel the need to play the 20 or 25 games I would normally put into a ship. I really do feel I've got a good grasp on what makes the ship good and what makes it tick that I'm going to jump into the review a little bit earlier than I might. I still have played, I think, eight games now, one all but one, and I've been averaging about 80,000 damage. Now, that is playing a very kitey game, and some people don't enjoy that, but that, to me, is how you play these French cruisers. They do very well at it. The engine boost and sped up rudder with that mod make you pretty hard to hit. Now, occasionally you do get hit hard, yeah, that's just part of the game, but if you keep yourself wiggling and keep adjusting where you're going to be, ships have a hard time hitting you. It takes a skilled player to kind of read what's happening and really lead you properly, or a bit of luck. So you can see already where I'm heading on this map is quite wide out, and that's for two reasons. One. I don't want to get caught by any vessels pushing around this point. You know, lots of DDs go around there. I've seen battleships kind of hug up against here. I don't want to be in close. With these French cruisers, you really do need to kind of hold back, keep your range, minimize how many ships can be shooting at you at any one given point. And the reason comes down to for you to be able to maneuver, duck, dip, dive, dodge those shots, you need to know how many people are looking at you. And if you keep that down to one, it's easier to dodge. But the second you have like two, three, four, five ships looking your way, you can no longer either angle or maneuver away from all of them. Eventually you're gonna be turning and giving someone a perfect side shot and your ship's gonna go bye-bye. So right off the bat, we've had this Miyoko come pushing in, I get a couple fires on her, and I'm feeling pretty good. One more volley, should finish her off, and of course I leave her on next to no health. My buddy in the crash bay, Flying Goomba, takes the final 35 damage in the kill. And I always give him heck for this, because when I know a fire's about to kill something, I'm like, yes, I'm about to get a kill. And then the shot comes. We had a good chuckle here. The fortunate thing is, you'll see a little bit later, he actually just lets something burn. He had a shot, he lets me have the kill, knowing the fires are gonna finish it off. One of the other things you'll see in this battle is a staple of my replays. Flying Goomba does indeed explode to satisfy all of those out of there who just like to see him suffer. So, with this cap captured, but you know, no strong presence here. We really do need to push in. Got a Ganice now with us, a Sims, Goomba in his Graf Spee, and a couple other BBs, and a cruiser further behind. Now, speaking of Ruddership, that is why I love it. If I didn't have that Ruddership, I do not think I would be dodging there. Now, initially at this point, with my Hydra up, I'm going, you know what? I can close that Leningrad. I can probably get him detected. And I'm gonna get myself in some trouble here. Like I was saying earlier, I was heading to the flank to avoid too many people looking at me at once. Well, now a lot of people are looking at me. And as you briefly saw in that armor viewer, this thing does not have the protection necessary to really keep it safe against self-safe against anything. Even that Leningrad sitting in smoke was doing some pretty decent damage to me. Incapacitated one of my turrets. So I get turned out, speed boost is active, you know, I'm sailing away at 32 knots. I'm gonna get to myself, get myself to safety, and then figure out my position and turn back in when I feel a little better. And one of the things worth noting too is one of the reasons I love the engine boost on these cruisers isn't about going faster. 
It's about not losing as much speed in a turn. You can see here, I'm in a full lock, like turn with my rudder, and I'm still doing 30.3 knots. In other cruisers, I find you lose a lot of your speed, and when I'm in battleships, I'm looking for cruisers in a turn. You know they're bleeding a lot of that speed off, they become a lot easier to hit. Whereas there, I maintain a lot more speed, and I come out of it, the ship quickly accelerates back up to that top speed, and you can see me cruising through 36 knots there, until I tap the rudder again. So the Miyoko's burning. I'm pretty confident it's gonna die. Goomba had a shot here, but he goes, okay, it's yours. And he let it go. So there's my first kill ever in Degrass, and I'm up to 20,000 damage. Now, there's a lot of ships, well, specifically three, all around me. An Amagi, a Byron, and a Colorado who is going down the middle. I guess he's seen some pictures of the Panama Canal and battleships transiting and going, that's where I want to be. And don't worry, we're going to come back to this Colorado later. Now, to his credit, he has slowed himself up. He's trying to get supporting shots in there. But I really do feel, with most of the enemy team over on this flank near Delta, starting to feel a little lonely with us pushing around through Alpha. And it's at this point that we kind of lose our shots on him, so the focus becomes the Bayern. The Germans, the natural enemies of the French ships in this game. And with Demolition Expert, I get another fire. He puts them out, and at this point, I'm just trying to relight him. Now you see me getting as close to land as I kind of want to before I turn in. I knew he had a bit of a reload. He fired at Goomba, and I wanted to get as much of this land kind of between me and him, just as additional protection. And I know at this point it doesn't really matter, but that's what was going through my head. I get another fire, he is burning down, we're getting the damage on him, he's almost a goner. I completely whiff those shots, throw them right over his bridge. But eventually, I will hit him. And this, I suppose, is a situation where IFHE really could come into its own. That 30% boost to HE penetration there, I probably would have gotten damage on the previous volley where they all shattered, but with the rate of fire into grass, you're going to get your shells soon enough. Now it is worth mentioning that while these are 152s, they're a touch slower than some of the other options, but they're fast enough. And you know, Wargaming lists that is one of the cons, and I just don't feel the guns are all that slow. Unlike something like the Nuremberg, where one of your turrets is stuck in the Y position, the ABX positioning of these turrets really just works out. It lets you push into things when you need to. So I throw my fighter in the air simply because there's no carrier and I want to see what that Colorado is doing. Goom and I want to push in on him. And the reason is he's going for a cap and our Fuso, New Mexico and whatever ship is down here, I can't read it at all. Um, they're, they're getting stranded. They've done a really valiant job kind of holding the enemy team at D. And it's given us the time to pick up a third cap. And with my plane spotting that Colorado, Goomba gives the all clear. The Colorado is not looking our way. So it's time to chase. He's in a narrow channel. We both have torpedoes and this should be fun. I try to take a cheeky shot, instead I just shoot the cliff, and well, I guess a couple shells made it past. And it's time to charge. I hit that engine boost because I'm behind Goomba. I don't want to be this far back. When you're a couple teammates trying to push on something, you want to be as close as possible. It gives you the best chance of dispersing damage. But what you're about to see is really the advantage of having 152 millimeter guns. Anyone who's gone up the Russian cruiser line knows this. They fire faster. And while two or threes can do a lot more damage, and if you can get into the Citadel, really hurt, 152s and their reload 
makes you a very flexible ship and there's just times you need that rate of fire. Looking at the map you should be able to pretty much guess what's coming up. We've got this Colorado, Goombo's torps are hitting, take a good chunk of him. Another set of torpedoes coming our way, thankfully Goomba had his Hydra up, gives us early enough warning and I'm going to use my speed and rudder shift to completely dodge them. Rather than try to thread the needle, I decide, no, I'm just going to sidestep all of these. I successfully get around, the Colorado's about to die, Goomba finishes them off, and now it's time to face down three Farragut's. Only two are spotted, but I can guarantee you one isn't at D, there he is coming our way. And this is gonna get hectic. The two on the right are a primary concern, because the one off to my port side, he's fired his torpedoes, but you can see he is positioning himself to get a next set off. So with Angry Ace in my gun sights, I fire and accidentally shoot Goomba, probably killing a signaler or something, but we don't have time to focus on that. We have to sink these Farraguts fast. They're all in a division. You know they're coordinating those torpedoes. They're a threat. And I get lucky. I managed to loop all those shells right over the edge of land and finish the first off. Now you can see me quickly checking my other side after I fire, and I've just got these on widespread. I'm just gonna use them to harass that Farragut do the same thing on my starboard and then get the guns back to work. I've got to pay attention to that one on my port side as I finish off this one to starboard. And there he goes. That's another kill. Swing the rudder over, get those guns going, and with 15 second 180 stock traverse, these things are quick, and because this is a battleship captain, I've got expert markers and they get around about a second quicker I hit the Farragut, line up the kill shot, there it is, and time to thread a needle. Thankfully the rudder is quick and I find my gap, but I've got a bigger problem and it's straight up the butt. There's a North Carolina on my tail and I eat some major damage. Now I'm hoping that my torps are ready, but they're just not. So. I'm going to have to try to get some damage in here with some fires. I just got Kraken finishing that Farragut off, and I'm not done. Now what proceeds here is going to require a bit of luck and maybe a bit of poor marksmanship on the North Carolina's case as I eat some shells from the New Mexico. There's the North Carolina's 4400 damage, but I think he felt that was the finishing shot because you'll notice. He's not lined up for the next one. Now one of his turrets is broken and he's turning in. He's still looking straight at me. He wants to get me finished off. I throw my peds into the water and I'm just trying to light a fire. If I'm going down, he's gonna burn and that's really all I'm thinking about. I kill some speed, swing the rudder over, duck the first shells and I survive the second down to 138 hit points. It's time to disappear, unfortunately, with 12.9 stock detectability. That's not happening. Plus, I just fired my guns. Now, the North Carolina's behind some land. The turpit's right there. He's got something else to focus on. In the meantime, because he turned out, my torpedoes are actually looking half decent. I get Confederate with the fire, and I'm feeling great right now. I'm as happy as I could be. I'm just gonna sail away, pretty much. He burns down, I pick up a sixth kill, and this game is all but over. New Mexico and Cleveland, all that remain, we've got the caps, we're taking the final one. Like 30 some points left, it's gonna be over. And like I said, this was my first game. And so often, your first match in a ship or a tank or whatever game you're playing really sets the tone for that equipment and for me this game just set a really great tone in my head for the degrasse i've had a ton of fun playing and that really just carries through to the remainder of the games now in this one 605,000 credits 10,633 xp because i was running a ton of flags confederate kraken 
just shy 82,000 damage, six kills, a ton of fires. I did some cap stuff, and really this I'd say is pretty average. I think my average right now is about 82,000 a game, and once again, that is kiting, staying off to the sides, really just doing damage, kind of getting kills by proxy, letting the fires do it, but that's how the French cruisers play. Top of team, Goomba coming in second. He did die to the Farragut's there, but that's par for the course, and honestly, I probably just don't upload it unless he dies in the game. It's just become the trend. As far as damage, it really is by committee in this one, and I don't do a ton of damage to any one ship, but I get a lot to a lot of different ships, and that's how these kind of fire starter cruisers typically work. And it's definitely how this ship has been working for me. It's been rare that I've really had to face down one target. I've always kind of been at that 13 kilometer range, just spamming shells at them. When you do get in close though, the AP does work and a Leander learned that the hard way. As far as credits, almost a half million in this game and the experience don't really pay attention to because of the flags. Now the grand question is, do you buy it? And if you like the Soviet cruiser Bujoni or La Glissonnière, and you're going up the French line, I'd say yeah, it's a fun ship to play. If you liked La Glissonnière, you'll like this ship, it's an improved one. You sacrifice a bit of AA, but you get some better gun performance. What I find kind of funny is, despite the fact that in real life this was a ship that existed, and was very Minotaur-like, like I kind of alluded to earlier talking about the British cruisers, this is more what the DeGrasse looked like. She kind of looks like the Minotaur. In real life, she didn't get the three triple-barreled things. She was developed after the war to fight jet fighters. So the one you see in game, you know, I kind of mentioned it's funny she doesn't have A, but it's because she's got very different guns to what she was given in real life. Anyways, I hope everyone found this partially informative. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing. And as always, I'm Quicksilver Slash, and I'll have another one for you all later.